I'm marking the publication of my new course on chessable on the Kalashnikov system by showing you a few games in that opening. So it's an open Sicilian and e5, and that's where the course starts. And you can see that that knight in the middle is attacked and it has a choice of six squares and five out of those six moves are no problem at all for black. Really the only move that tests um, black is knight b5. And that's kind of interesting that, you know, if you play e5, you know, there's a good chance your opponent is going to go wrong, even at this early stage. Knight b5, as I said, it's the only move really that tests black. And d6 marks the start of the Kalashnikov system. Now, the game I want to show you here is Matsura against Vescovi, and this was played in the Brazilian Championship in 2009. Uh, Giovanni Be Vescovi is, well, a uh, multiple win of uh, the, the Brazilian Championship, um, strong grandmaster, and he plays this bishop e7 move. Some of you have been asking, why not b5? Well, b5 is possible, actually. This is the old way of playing the opening, and then knight e7. This is how uh, Sveshnikov originally played this. Um, but I think White King, whoops, that's overshot. I think White can get a reasonable game by playing c4, but, but this is also an interesting way for black to play. <clears throat> but in the course, I recommend bishop e7, which is a little bit more subtle. So basically, you want to play knight f6 without allowing the pin. And, you know, many strong players have tried bishop b7, including Magnus Carlsen. There you go, he's played it in a few games. So that just shows that it's a very respectable opening. So knight c4, and, and this is a very logical move, uh, bringing the knight from a3 back into play. But now black plays b5 and pushes the knight again. So, you know, white loses a lot of time by playing these knight moves, and we obviously, particularly the, the king's knight, it's spun back to a decent position, but it's taken so long to get there that actually black is ahead in development. And also black has been able to advance on the queen side quite nicely. In this game, white plays a very sturdy variation. Bishop d3, now this is the kind of move which um, is, is very common actually, and, well, quite decent. You know, the bishop is supported by the pawn. It supports the pawn on e4. And, of course, prepares castling. So it, it's a solid idea. Castles, both sides castle. And now, in my course for chessable, I actually recommend knight b4. You know, if we can grab that bishop, then that's, that's a, a nice achievement for black. And actually, the main line in my course goes like this and then the knight comes into d4 to attack the bishop again and then knight takes and bishop g5 this is such a common idea i call this the breakout bishop so the bishop the, the so-called bad bishop breaks out to g5 and exchanges off for the Bishop on c1, and that gives black greater control of the dark squares. It's such a common idea in the Kalashnikov. Really, really nice idea. But in this game, instead of knight b4, um, Vescovi played rook b8. And this is a kind of waiting move, actually. I think it's really interesting. Um, so rook b8 is so often a useful move in the Kalashnikov, supporting that pawn on b5. It kind of... Um, it's prophylaxis against a4 actually it's it's not preventing a4 but with the rook behind the pawn sometimes black can take sometimes it'll support the, pu the push here but actually i think what black is doing with rook b8 specifically is actually waiting for knight d5 and then he's going to get in bishop g5 again so the position opens up and rook b8 is is always a useful move in these positions um, covering b6, um, you don't have to worry about knight c7. And yes, it discourages white from playing a4. So rook b8 played in this game. King h1, another waiting move. And black plays a kind of waiting move here. You could push on with b4, but 
but bishop d7 is, is another waiting move. Again, waiting for that knight to hit d5. Bishop d2 played, and now black goes for knight b4, attacking the bishop. And that's certainly a gain for black if uh, the knight exchanges for the bishop. So the bishop just ducks back. And now the bishop comes to e6. There's some toing and froing in this game, but I think that's very typical for this opening, that the players kind of feel their way where they want the pieces to go. And so it's more about concepts. It's about ideas. It's about knowing where you want the pieces to be positioned rather than um, forcing variations where, you know, if you play one bad move, then the whole position collapses. So now the knight is pushed back. And here, um, well, it's possible to, to come in with knight d5 again. But black would probably just take and put the knight into d4. And then this is a, a very nice idea. Swinging the knight round to c5 via d7. And of course, making way for that bishop potentially to come to g5. You've got to watch out for that one, queen h5. Um, but, you know, moves like f5 or g6 are coming soon as well. So this structure is very common when the knight comes to d5 and is exchanged off. And, is exchanged off. and you can see that black gets this really nice kingside pawn majority, four against three. And that majority can often be used very well uh, by black. I call that the, the steamroller, the pawns just rolling down the board, uh, giving black a really nice initiative. That's very common. But in this game, white prevaricates, plays bishop e1. It's not such a great square for the bishop somehow. And black doesn't uh, react in, in a, a rash way, but just plays queen d7, very good move, just connecting the rooks. I like queen d7, really solid move. Bishop d3, and <laughs> there we go. Having played queen d7, I mentioned this in the last Kalashnikov video, that this makes room for the bishop, and here Vescovi employs the bad bishop bounce. It's not on such a great square on e7. But once it comes here, it can bounce out to b6 and looks down that diagonal. And that is really nice. A great diagonal for the bishop. So there we go. The bad bishop bounce once again. But white changes the nature of the position with f4. And, I mean, obviously this, is, uh, this increases the pressure. You know, white wants to play open up on the king side. And f5 is threatened. But actually, you know, whenever I see f4 in these kind of Sicilian positions, I'm absolutely delighted. Because after this exchange, the knight hits e5. Notice that the, with the Kalashnikov, this structure here, d6 and e5, it's pretty constant. And so it's very clear where you want your pieces when you know exactly what the pawn structure is. Pawn structure determines plans, it determines piece placement. And here, yeah, we know exactly where we want to go. We want that bishop here, chunky square. The knights stand well. And here, yeah, we can often employ maneuvers like the bad bishop bounce or, or the, the breakout to g5. And when f4 comes, very common idea, and usually, Black is actually very pleased to see this move, and it's really common that after the exchange, you can put your knight on e5. It's just a beautiful square for the knight, looking at these squares in white's position. And that knight on e5 blockades the e-pawn, so that bishop is really hasn't got a chance to activate. It's really powerful. White played knight d5. Of course, that gets exchanged off. And if, if e takes, then, well, I think the move I like is just g6. Notice the bishop still supports the knight. g6 shuts out the bishop, controls the f5 square, 
and you know maybe that that knight is going to bounce to h5 and then f5 again so once again we've got this poor majority on the king's side and although white's king you might think well white's king isn't in danger but actually in the long term it is a problem for white as we're going to see a counter-attack is coming soon so in this game knight takes was played that gets exchanged off of course and we have this very nice structure for black three pawns here d6 pawn supports the knight on e5 that can't be driven away by a pawn so that stands beautifully and actually this uh, minority attack on the queen side can often be very useful i mean it really cramps those pawns there g6 played good move shutting out the bishop but also perhaps later on preparing f5 a4 so white is going for counterplay on the queen side but you know that's well as we're going to see that's that's problematic bishop g5 played so now you can play bishop g5 there are no tricks with queen h5 having played g6 so this is a very annoying move for white that rook has to decide does it come back here or does it come over there it's actually very tricky if the rook comes back let's say to f1 then black can take on a4 and you can see that there's there are potential problems with the pawn on b2 so there you go it's so often the case that that rook on b8 this mysterious rook move but actually it comes into play beautifully but in this case white played the rook to b4 and black so more pressure here but it's interesting i i don't know if vescovi needed to do this but it certainly sharpens the play after this move and actually tempts white into making uh well a, a bad decision on the queen side so black exchanges and a5 and rook b5 now maybe that rook had to swing back to the king side it's not a not a beautiful decision uh maybe that's the most sensible move and then well i'd be tempted just to play a4 and actually press on the pawn on b2 um, but there are lots of ways for black to play that but after a5 white played rook b5 he was tempted by this pawn now watch what happens and this is so typical not just in the kalashnikov but so many sicilian openings that basically black goes for the counter attack on the king bishop takes pawn knight g4 here we go all black's pieces looking good now attacking white's king and that rook is st stuck way across on the other side of the board bishop b6 covers this diagonal that's fair enough but now bishop e3 invading on the dark squares that bad bishop suddenly comes to a fantastic diagonal it did bounce back here but it bounced out to g5 and now it's coming to, to e3 that's the key square takes rook takes obviously there's a threat to check here so queen d2 and now a very sweet little combination for black finishes the game can you spot it black to play and win i'm sure it's not the only move i mean you know in this kind of position simple move like queen e7 i dare say is simply very good for black but this next move is absolutely decisive rook takes bishop queen takes allows knight f2 and in the game check here pawn takes and now a very nice winning move queen a7 hitting the rook threatening a check threatening a check this is decisive rook c8 knight f2 and that was the final move of the game white resigned if king g1 knight e4 check a deadly discovered check followed by knight takes queen like i said so often that's the scenario in sicilian positions where white gets distracted on one side of the board and suddenly black counterattacks on the king side there are only two pawns in front of the king that means this diagonal is open 
Black's king is really safe here. And yeah, the counterattack came through. It happened so quickly. You know, white played f4, but that was the start of the problems. And yeah, once bishop g5 came, then this looks really, really nice for black. So just a reminder, my new course on chessable on the Kalashnikov is being published at the moment. I haven't got the exact date. I thought it was going to be published today on Monday. Uh, but anyway, I'll keep you posted and I'll, I'll post the link when it is published. I'll let you know, of course. But I, I'm pretty sure it's published round about now. But anyway, do, ch do check it out. I'm really proud of the course. Um, I think it's a great weapon for black against 1e4.